Hi guys, uh, welcome to Raising Vibrations with myself, Simon. Um, today, what we're going to be doing is going through the full moon and uh, basically just again, as we always do, just discuss the nature of what the full moon is offering us at this point in time, how we can uh, use it to improve our spirituality, uh, develop self-awareness, and overall, just try to make um, the transition that we're going through at this point in time a little bit easier to understand. So that's what we're at for today, the full moon in Gemini. It's a really exciting one, guys. Um, I've definitely uh, found a lot of like healing through the experience, which I'd love to share with you guys, actually, in that sense. Um, it landed completely and utterly on my uh, north node. And um, so, yeah, I wanted to share with you guys a little bit about that as well, which will be coming at the end. OK, so the first thing uh, that I want to do to do is um, and I, I love doing that, that that's like my, my Gemini moon loves to actually like let people know what I'm about to do without just before I'm actually going to do it, which on a part of me wants to reject it because it's like, why don't you just do it instead of actually saying it? But, uh, you know, so I've, I've become like really aware of that experience, but I've just been saying, okay, right now what I'm going to do is this. And, uh, I don't know why my Gemini does that. Um, I'm looking into my actual chart to understand that maybe the comic uh, conditionings, that are associated with that type of behavior, but it's always like, this is what I'm going to do. And then I go and actually do it. So not too sure, but anyway, right. So, um, the first, <laughs> here we go. The first thing that I wanted to share with you guys was, um, the, the astrology and, uh, f that it's, that it's happening for my, on my own chart. And I had the, the full moon, which was landing on 14 degrees Gemini. Now my north node is 16 degrees um, and uh, I've also got the, the north node of Uranus also conjunct my, um, uh, it's also conjunct my, my north node of my chart as well. So I've got the north node in Gemini in the fifth house and then your north node of Uranus also there as well. So there's a cr really, really clear indication that the soul's intention in this lifetime is to sort of like fracture and break through you know, whatever it is that it's been defining, whatever it's been using to to essentially express itself. It's like trying to break that free and say, hey, by the way, let's try a new way of of expressing oneself. Let's try a new way of defining oneself in that sense. And because the new moon, uh, pardon me, the full moon is landing on that experience over there. Um, I had a really, really interesting understanding about the nature of myself and how my own karma with my own astrology has put me in that situation where I've, I've been incredibly sensitive to, to definitions. And, um, and I've noticed that a lot of my own spiritual trauma that has come throughout past lives, etc., have been through the limitation that is inherently um, associated with words and how words themselves or definitions can, can actually lose the meaning, right? And how that, that creates the separateness. And also a large part of that separateness comes through saying that this person's better or this person has a different perspective, et cetera, et cetera. It's like the definitions themselves create the separateness. And my own astrology chart has got an incredible amount of Capricorn as well at the top um, with Pluto and such like that. And it all in conjuncts, in other words, makes 150 degree aspect to Chiron in uh, my astrology chart, right? I've got Chiron and Gemini at one degree. Now you can see this Pluto and Mercury completely and utterly in conjunct my Chiron and my whole entire like because um, uh, Pluto in the 10th house is already looking at, at the way of life through definitions. My own soul's progression has been basically outwardly defining itself and also being and holding on to words that have these definitions. And then these words have got these incredible like uh, negative connotations to them and associations. And that whenever I hear a word that that has got nothing to do with what the person's actually meaning, yet the, the soul on, on a very deep and um, subconscious level is completely and utterly losing the essence of what a person's trying to say to me because the word has this negative connotation associated with it on a very deep psychological level. It's not even like I'm aware of it. You know, it's only as I've started to really uh, meditate and, and, and get to the bottom of, of what this full moon was about that I start to notice it in my own astrology on, on a more profound level, on a more de uh, deeper level. I always knew that that was the essence, but I didn't understand it on an emotional level. And so it was quite interesting to become aware of the fact that how definitions actually work, especially for people that have got Pluto in the 10th house or a lot of uh, a lot of you guys that have got like a Capricorn, strong Capricorn signature in your chart, um, the definitions of things and how they create this like limitation 
and how we can be affected by these limitations without even realizing it, that we are reacting based on how we, do, how we are uh, responding to these, these definitions. And if we really take an opportunity to look at how we are defining ourselves as in each other, and also looking at the definition associated with, um, in terms of humanity itself, like you are a uh, spiritual healer, for instance, or you're a light worker, you know, that, that has a certain realm of experience or a certain realm of activity that you operate through. Yet the essence of what you are has is lost in some way because another person can come over to you that has does the same job. Essentially, you're trying to spread lights, etc. And they call themselves something else. And you guys could actually have an argument with each other saying, no, I'm better. No, I'm better. Or that's this, this rules and these regulations, and this is the definitions, etc. And these are how it must, this is how it must operate. You get this point I'm trying to make. It's like these definitions themselves and how they, how they are interacting with people create an incredible amount of like segregation. We, we, we define ourselves and then we look at each other and we forget the essence of who we are. And a large part of my own soul's journey has um, in the past lives has been creating this very elite type of definition and that if you were to be part of a group of people that I would like to teach or part of an experience then you needed to be of a certain um, you know like definition you had to be of a certain spiritual community you had to be of a certain level and that if you weren't in that experience then you weren't allowed to enter that okay and I watch it like in, I mean, I'm, I'm not doing it as, as, as much uh, con uh, unconsciously um, in this lifetime, at least, or at least when I've gone through my Saturn return and, and started to awaken to my soul completely and it's, and it's karma. Um, so I've been really, really careful of that. And, and like I said, this new moon really f like under made me understand the nature of my own astrology, like in a very deep, deep level. And I can heal from those things by just letting them go. But the, the, the point I was trying to make was is that I, I realized how my soul in the past had done that, where it, it wanted to, to create this, this community, this, this sense of like living a life where people are able to, to actually follow their, their spiritual awakeness. But you had to be of a certain definition. You had to be of a certain like uh, guild and so on and so forth. And that created segregation. It was like the people that actually needed the help, the people that actually needed their, the essence of, of spiritual guidance in some way were completely and utterly rejected because they weren't of a certain elitism or something. And just because of those definitions, those boundaries, as it were, and this new moon, this part of me, this full moon that's taking place right now has got an incredible amount of energy that is allowing us to become aware of the nature of definitions and how we as human beings have created these boundaries and borders and and uh, ways of perceiving each other, etc, etc, through these definitions. Now, what's interesting to note is that the sign Capricorn itself correlates to definitions. It correlates to the sense of of the boundary, as it were, right, because it naturally sextiles Scorpio and it also naturally sextiles Pisces. And that Hulk like connection over there correlates to the nature of how you transcend um, the definitions are you, you, you access other dimensions of yourself, Pisces accessing other dimensions of yourself. You transcend the, the physical, but really what you're doing is you're integrating it. If that makes sense to you guys. Um, and the, 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 the point I was trying to make was that the, the, the skin right on the body is a Capricorn function because it creates the boundary in which everything exists within the bark of a tree. And so we as human beings have these definitions and then we see each other through those definitions and then we actually lose the essence of where we of who we really are. For instance, you can take like a whole cultural of people, okay, like a different cultures, Asians, um, uh, people, people from from uh, uh, Australia, what's the, the Aborigines, um, uh, Aboriginal people, right? You can take some of the, the people from South Africa, for instance, the, the more uh, the darker um, skin tones in, in Africa. And we all do the same thing. We all came from the mother's womb. OK, that's how we originated. We all need to survive, i.e. to eat uh, food, etc., etc., drink water and so on and so forth. And we all have one thing in common. We need love. We need the binding agent that is the Pisces energy, that is the, the source of things, right? These are all things that we have in common. And yet we put each other aside and we see each other as completely different just because of the skin tone and the way that the, uh, the, <laughs> 
the, the elites in that sense, the people that are actually controlling the world have created this diversity amongst us and they've forced us to see each other differently by, by being in the ego. So the, the, the point I'm trying to make here is, is that these definitions, Capricorn, these boundaries, these borders have given humanity the ability to completely and utterly lose of what we actually are at the bottom of it, what we are in, in the sense of the totality of us, the essence of us. And so this new moon, this part of me, this full moon, I keep on saying it, but this full moon has got an incredible amount of energy that is allowing us to step into a new space in our spiritual awakening and our spiritual awareness, where we can start to recognize that these limitations that we have on us as human beings, when we focus in the 3D, are ones that literally create the pain and suffering that we have, that we don't see humanity as a global one. We don't see humanity as different cultures with different philosophies, i.e. experiencing reality from their own point of view, but we are still part of the same. So I bring you through to, to the, the, the next level of this conversation that I wanted to have about my own personal awakening was is that I started to become more and more attuned to my own soul's journey in this lifetime, which is to literally create content, to literally create programs, etc., etc., that allow us to understand the essence of who we are, to bring us back to the essence of what we are. And I think that on some level, my soul is allowing me to actually follow this path because it allows me to actually heal from all the damage that might have been done in the past where I've created this, this segregation, right? And, and, and uh, to, to heal that, to, to literally, because Capricorn itself will correlate to, to feelings of guilt in some way, like natural guilt. And one of the reasons that could be the case is because of past life dynamics of doing something that wasn't the most appropriate, like that wasn't the right judgment from human's perspective, not from like this, this moral code of uh, conduct, etc., etc., but from natural guilt. In other words, like, you know, doing something that creates uh, a situation for another human being that might, that they might suffer from. You understand this point? I'm trying to make the difference over there. So th there's a part of me that is connecting to that space. I'm not 110% sure that it is the truth. I'm just saying that this is how it's making me feel in that sense. But it is definitely something that has awoken a new step in this direction, which is awesome because on one level, not only does it give me the opportunity to do my polarity point of my Pluto, which is to bring me back to, to the sense of, of cancer, which is the community, but also to, to literally like this, exactly that, give back to the community in a way where it allows for the growth of humanity right in some way that that we are able to actually heal from all the traumas that we have experienced over the last 2000 years through uh, religious conditioning that has been influenced by patriarchy but also the last 6000 years where we've been living in the bottom of the sine wave in other words in the, the spiritual winter as it were you know so it's it's quite a cool task to take in and it definitely filled my heart up when i started to discover this this experience on the full moon that's what came to me and i have been searching for it in some way like trying to find out the essence of, of, of my soul's journey, what's next in that. And that was really given to me in that way. So really, really cool. And um, super interesting because of the, the, the full moon actually, and I almost said it again, because of the full moon actually uh, landing all the way on, on my north node of my astrology chart. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to bring you up the astrology chart and I'm going to share with you the, the sort of aspects and, and more understandings of, of what I'm sharing with you over here. And also hopefully share with you a little bit more about how astrological symbols manifest um, in, in our consciousness. Okay, so I'm going to jump to the charts quickly right now. So this is the full moon um, astrology chart. Okay, and the first place that I'm well, firstly, what I'm going to do is just quickly show you exactly where the full moon was. I mean, this is 13 degrees over here, but it was actually at 14 degrees, complete uh, opposition to the sun in Sag. Whenever we're talking about the, the axis of Gemini and Sagittarius, what we are essentially looking at in terms of humanity's uh, conscious expression, in other words, what the arc, the essence of the archetypes are sharing with us, is the relationship of how we as human beings understand our truth. In other words, the way that we experience life on earth for ourselves. You know, each and every single one of us has an individual like perception of reality, okay? That is our own based on our experiences, okay? And the experience that we have as we journey across um, our, our earth timeline is all sort of like contained within the Sagittarius archetype. It's like how we search for our truth. Okay. It's what literally guides us in terms of finding our, our sense of journey, our sense of meaning in that sense. 
Now the polarity is Gemini over here and what Gemini will correlate to is how we actually take all these intuitive experiences, right? These thought forms that are existing in a very creative and um, intuitive sense that doesn't actually have any name or anything. It's just the essence of what we know. When we have Gemini here, what Gemini does is gives us the ability to then take those thoughts and put them into words that allow us to actually then create reality for ourselves, how we actually communicate the essence of something that we know that doesn't have any uh, definition, okay? So Gemini correlates to how we actually create that definition through speaking, through language, through thought forms, okay? And the reason why that would be the case is because it's natural square to Pisces, Sagittarius and Pisces visions, in other words, understanding ourselves through the relationship of, of pictures, etc., etc. Whereas Gemini and Virgo naturally square each other and their polarities, of course, right, as you can see over there. So this will creating the actual reality of the situation, putting it in organized form, right, organization Virgo, putting it in a way that is in a linear logical process. And these two influence each other all the time. Okay. So that's what Gemini and Sag does, the ability to communicate Gemini, our truth, our philosophy, and so on and so forth, right? And so so you can naturally see over here that there's, there's, an, there's a big essence, there's an essential like um, clue here with these symbols about how we are understanding the nature of our truth, like how we are exploring, exploring our philosophy. What is your philosophy? Think to yourself, like what do you, what do you use to define the nature of your, your life? Do you... What type of belief system do you have? What type of orientation? What things have you experienced in your life that influence the way that you understand yourself in the context of the world? Do you use astrology to, to make sense of things? Do you use the Bible to make sense of things? And so on and so forth. So that's what the Sag stuff is over here about. It's like we're getting to a point within our consciousness where we're understanding and redefining our belief systems, okay? in this way, like we're, we're searching for it. We're trying to find the ultimate meaning in this experience. And the thing here is, is that Jupiter in itself is a Sagittarius archetype. Jupiter and Sag are the same. So you can see here that Jupiter is transit in Leo, right? Okay, and Leo and the sun. Can you see the mutual reception over here? Can you see that there's a big emphasis about the nature of what specifically is being understood what specifically is being worked on okay jupiter's transit through leo has all been about how we are creatively actualizing ourselves how we are actually finding this new sense of purpose this new spent sense of direction and we're trying to to put put that into the world we're trying to find it we feel it at this stage that's an important thing to understand we feel it at this stage so with Jupiter here in Leo and the Sun in Sag and that mutable reception and Mercury there as well and Venus, you can clearly see that there's an incredible amount of like, what is the philosophy that I'm going to use to creatively actualize myself? What type of structure, like metaphysical structure, am I going to uh, impose on my life that is going to influence the nature of my uh, like view? You know, okay, so you, you see the world through astrology. So how does that superstructure give you the tools necessary to answer the big questions in life? Does that make sense? It's the superstructure that we have. In other words, our belief system that gives us the tools necessary to answer the questions. Okay. So this is what's happening over here. But on a deeper level, and I hope that this works over here. Uh, let's see if I can get that uh, those things to come up. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So you've got Jupiter here in Leo, you've got Mars in uh, Aquarius, and you've got Uranus in Aries, okay? Now, the first thing in terms of what this chart is trying to tell us is Pluto. Pluto in Capricorn is doing what? Pluto is essentially the core evolutionary intention. Pluto has gone through from zero all the way to 10 degrees, which means it's created involution. It's created all the situations that are necessary for us to understand where all the things are outdated and old and outmoded, etc. So we come aware of this thing. We're like, okay, this is what the problem is. Now it's a 12 degrees, which means that it's now starting to move into the space where we start to rediscover. We start to put, we start to find out, we, we start to figure out what we can do that will allow us to reconstruct a reality that is in line with where we are today, not where we were when Pluto was lost in Capricorn 256 years ago. Okay, you understand this point, reality has changed, the essence of what we are has changed. So we are now starting to reconstruct the nature of our reality, individually and collectively. 
Now that reconstruction requires obviously an incredible amount of like fire energy in it, right? That's what you do. You build a fire, you, use, you, you put all the like, uh, or you create a project, you have this, this idea, etc. You want to now put it into reality. You need spirit. You need the essence. You need the, the burning elements to bring you alive in the sense. So Jupiter in Leo is offering that experience at the stage and obviously with the Sag stuff over here. So the redefinition Pluto through Capricorn, okay, is the ultimate bottom line here. Okay. And the placement of Jupiter in Leo is offering this ability to now start finding out, to start have this energy to expand and explore and to, to figure out this new journey so that we can have this inspiration. Now on the 8th of December, which I believe is today, Jupiter is actually moving retrograde, which means that Jupiter is now not going forward. It's not inspiring. It's not giving us this opportunity to, to get all this inspiration. What it's doing is saying, okay, guys, we've got to a point now where we've got this first, like, uh, this first part of this journey, Jupiter through, through Leo, this first part of this journey. It's been trailblazing up to 22 degrees and saying, let's get this done. Let's try these things out, etc., etc." But they are still they are still, all these ideas, all these things are still influenced by the past. So the essence of Jupiter through Leo at the stage has been one where we have been getting inspiration, but it is not one where we need to act on that yet. And the reason why this is the case is because we're still acting from the old model with new inspiration. So if we use the old model, okay, to create the new, we're just going to create the, the same structure again, where we are right now. Because the mold that we're coming from, the mold that we're understanding from is limited in our awareness. So Jupiter is now moving backwards. It's going to retrograde all the way until 12 degrees Leo. And it's going to only go direct on the, on the 8th of, of uh, April 2015. And so what, this, what the, the, the charts is suggesting over here in terms of this is, is that Mars moves into Aquarius and goes, let's break things apart. Let's transform let's shatter let's look at this objectively let's give us the opportunity to fracture the molded form that we have had in the past so that we can then allow for new space to exist within us so that we can start then um, putting in influencing and influencing and putting in new thought forms that are of today's mold not of the past do you get this point i'm trying to make so the synchronicity here is, is that mars moves into aquarius just as jupiter about to go retrograde and of course, Mars and Aries are the same symbols and Uranus and Aquarius are the same symbols. And you've also got the South Node here. So what does that tell you in terms of the, the, the pattern over here? It's saying, okay, we need to first fracture the old form that we have, okay, so that we can then have nothing, in other words, a blank canvas. And then from now up until the 8th of April, we need to reflect we need to go back. We need to review. We need to try and understand stuff that we have have basically been um, becoming aware of since August this year. Remember that Jupiter went direct in uh, August 2014, right, in into Leo, which means that since August, we've been having this Jupiter energy flow through us, etc. So now it's an opportunity to take all the information that you've got, all the sort of like the ideas, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and jot them down, write them down, and say, where can I, where can I change this? What can I do that is going to influence this new direction? What do I, what have I not thought about, and so on and so forth? So I'm encouraging you guys to stimulate your mind by thinking of new thought forms that are at this point in time, and give Jupiter's cycle through this retrograde up until the 8th of April. A, 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 a really, really serious thought about how you're going to creatively actualize yourself. Now, the energy is going to naturally move backwards anyway. So there's going to be a natural sort of cycle with this process. So don't force it. Just allow yourself to, to not like get too excited about the future in the sense that you just want to get things done because it's, you're going to work against the universe at this stage. So it's about allowing these thought forms to come to you. Take the opportunity, be aware. Somebody might say to you or give you an example of something that is completely tied in with your idea. And if you're listening very carefully to it, you can see that they're actually giving you an, a new way of looking at it, a new perspective. And the universe talks through people, it talks through us, et cetera, et cetera. You get this point I'm trying to make. So it's really, really about from now until April with this new creative project, this new endeavor, et cetera, et cetera. Allow yourself to, to review, to reflect, because I promise you, as soon as it goes direct on the 8th of April, 
2015, which by the way, I looked at the chart, there are like massive fire trines, you know, and, and there's also a grand fire trine as well. So there's, there's going to be a lot of energy at that point in time that's going to say to you, now let's go. And it's beautiful timing because it's April. And where's the sun? In Aries. And Uranus would have already gone past the south node, which means that the fracturing of the past molded outdated ways of being will be completely and utterly gone and you would have had new space to create from. And then, of course, Saturn's in, in, in Sag as well. So what I'm trying to say to you guys right now in terms of the first thing here is that the universe is saying to us, we've got this new direction, this new way of going things, but we first need to just get rid of the definitions. We first need to break the mold. And this is where it's happening. Okay, you've got the new the, the full moon in Gemini. You've got the Chiron over here. Look at that 13 degrees, 13 degrees. Now it's 14, obviously. And you've got Mercury at 13, but they are conjunct. Pretty cool how that synchronicity manifests there, right? So the first thing is Mercury and Gemini are the same archetype. And Chiron over here is in Pisces and it's making a square to those things there. Okay, now Gemini correlates to words, names, etc, etc. And, and what we do is when we create something, we give it a name and that defines it. Yet the essence of what we have given a name to is, is, is still manifesting itself without a name. There aren't any names to anything in terms of the essence of stuff. In other words, um, the desk, for instance, is only a desk because we've defined it as a desk. Yet if we take that label away, we could use it for something else completely. It can be used for a ping pong table. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like the point I'm trying to make here is, is that when we define something, it becomes limited to that experience. And so in terms of limitations, the Jupiter cycle through Sag, I mean, part of me through Leo is saying we've got to remove the definitions and limitations that we're imposing on ourselves so that we can have freedom of understanding, freedom of thought to expand the nature of what we want to um, define or, or, or redefine ourselves as. And so that we can then create more expansion, more awareness, more opportunity for growth. OK, so the Gemini function over here is to let go of the words and to understand the essence of what it is that you are. So you're not a doctor, you're not a, you're not a lawyer, you're not an accountant, you're not a financial this. You're somebody that, that is interested in healing, doctor, for instance. You've got to get to the essence of what you are before you can understand what your journey is about and how you can, and how you can walk that path. What is your essence? What is your message without words? And only through that understanding can you really, really get to the bottom and then start from there to build your, your new direction to build your tree, to, to grow your tree, to grow your, your, your journey from that space, because it's undefined. It has no definition. It is just is. And that is something that only you can personally understand. And that's the reason as to why it's all of the stuff in Sag and Pisces, because this is your intuition, right? Sagittarius, your personal truth and how you experience it and relative to the source of things. So this message over here is about letting go of the definitions, breaking the molds of how you've defined yourself before, shattering all those types of experiences, and then allowing yourself to feel the essence of what you are, feel it. And when you come from that space, then you will be able to start then moving in a new direction that is in align with the source of stuff, which is you. You get this point I'm trying to make. So you're aligning with your source, you're aligning with who you are and the essence of what you are with, without any sort of labels, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, that are being promoted. Okay, so that's the astrology chart over there, guys. I mean, there's there's so much to talk about. I mean, Saturn's going to be moving into Sagittarius, which I'll be doing a video on for you guys. But Saturn's at this 28 degree mark. So it's it's really culminating. It's really getting to the the the, the new space uh, in terms of its new journey. So this will be like a really, really sort of like trying to walk the talk in the sense, right? We the, the veil of the Maya has been removed. OK, and what's interesting as well that I didn't actually speak about, which I'll move on to right now, is the Pluto in Capricorn. And that's making that square to Uranus and Aries. OK, and look at it, 12 degrees, 12 degrees. Now, <clears throat> the exact square will happen on the 15th of this month, the 15th of December. So mark your calendars, guys, because this is the sixth square, the sixth Pluto Uranus square. Now, the way I see this manifesting over here is like, again, adding to the essence of breaking free, breaking the mold. So it's going to be supporting Saturn in Sag. It's going to be supporting the Mars in, in Aquarius. And it's also going to be supporting the Jupiter retrograde. 
So this sixth square is going to be shattering the old definitions that are confining you. So if you find yourself in limitations, if you find yourself like really being blocked or things are happening where you're experiencing like, you know, breakdowns through Uranus's uh, energy, then ask yourself that that must be a definition that is holding me, that is limiting me. And so therefore I can transform it into something positive by understanding the other side of the coin in that sense. How has this helped me? How has this limitation helped me become broken free from that essence? You understand this point I'm trying to make, okay? So I hope that that um, analysis of that chart over there gave you a lot of information about what this new moon, uh, pardon me, this full moon has, has done for us. Um, I don't want to share a lot of, I mean, pardon me, I don't want to speak a lot about it and confuse you guys. So I've tried to keep it short, but very, very informative in the sense of what the ultimate meaning in this process has been about. And so as you guys know, always on the left hand side over there, I have the picture that is associated with this uh, full moon <laughs> in Gemini experience, which is literally the shattering of the old identity, the mold that we have been, the mold that we that we have created within ourselves and the illusion of separateness that has come from this, that we are that we are different and that there is something that we can't share in common with another person that needs to dissolve, that needs to break free. We need to see ourselves as one global community. And if you think like that, if you allow yourself to actually understand the concept of global community and that we are one, then you will start to recognize that you're not alone in the universe in terms of the fact that there are other people around the world that are experiencing the same as yourself and that you need to connect in that way. Use things like Google Plus. Wake Up World is awesome in the sense because it's got a it's got like 1.4 million people on its Facebook group and people are joining in in conversations all the time, sharing their experiences and so on and so forth. So check Wake Up World as, uh, out as well where they've got loads and loads of people there. So start connecting on a global level. Start sharing your experiences with other people that are all around the world that are making you feel like you're connected. Because the whole purpose of the awakening and a sporadic experience is to allow Earth's grid to wake up in a way that where everybody is, is having this awakening and we can connect to each other. Because if it was just on one place, constant like a concentrated place, that would just spread very, very slowly. Whereas if you have people in Malaysia, you have people in, in South America, you have people in um, Australia, you have people in Sweden, you have people in, in, in the States, etc., etc., having the sporadic awakening, you see how it spreads faster. And we're learning to, to become more collectively connected, okay, in that sense, and remove the limitations, remove the essence of... Of, of what we have defined ourselves in the past and let's get rid of the ego that has been distorted and replace it with the new ego, which is earth is one. We are one in that sense, okay? So guys, what I wanted to share with you right now is that in the description below is the article to this um, video. I highly recommend that you watch it, uh, pardon me, read it. There's so much more information in there as well that I try to capture using my words. Um, so check that out. The link is in the description. Also on my um, actual Facebook page as well, I've got loads of stuff that is about this theme. So go check it out as well the, the, on the Facebook. All the links are, are there as well. Okay. Um, hit the like and subscribe button for this video, guys, um, and share it if you really, really enjoyed it. And let me know what you thought about it as well. That's, uh, you know, I love to, to see that interaction as well with you guys. And finally, if you're interested in actually purchasing any of my services, check out simonforster.com. The links are all in the description on my website over there. Okay, guys. Um, so yeah, great. Have a fantastic evening, guys, and I will see you later. Take care. Bye-bye.